Hi friends, welcome to biologyexamsforyou.com. The topic of our discussion is photorespiration, the pathway which is also called as C2 cycle, advantages and disadvantages of photorespiration in plants within 5 to 10 minutes. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe and support this channel. Let's begin with the definition of photorespiration. Photorespiration is a light dependent process that involves the uptake of oxygen and release of carbon dioxide just like our respiration that occurs in plants. The reason for photorespiration is the oxygenase activity of the enzyme Rubisco. This is Rubisco ribulose 1,5-biphosphate carboxylase oxygenase. This is the enzyme that catalyzes the first step of Calvin cycle or light independent reaction where carbon dioxide combines with RUBP in the presence of enzyme Rubisco forming 3-phosphoglyceric acid and ultimately synthesizing sugar. That process, that cycle is called as the Calvin cycle. Here Rubisco's carboxylase activity is utilized for binding to carbon dioxide. Rubisco is having a second activity which is the oxygenase activity if the carbon dioxide concentration is low and oxygen concentration is high, Rubisco will bind to oxygen resulting in the formation of 3-phosphoglyceric acid that enters Calvin cycle and 2-phosphoglycolate, a carbon 2 C2 compound. To recycle this 2-phosphoglycolate, it should travel through three organelles wasting ATP and NADPH without the production of glucose or sugar. Thus result in wastage of energy considered as a wasteful pathway using ATP, NADPH and carbon dioxide thereby reducing photosynthetic efficiency by 30% in C3 plants. But there are many advantages we will be discussing that also. So in photorespiration oxygen combines with RUBP in the presence of Rubisco forming 3-phosphoglycerate and 2-phosphoglycolate to regenerate the, this 2-phosphoglycolate back to RUBP. ATP and NADPH is utilized and carbon dioxide is released thereby reducing the carbon fixation and also photosynthetic efficiency. This occurs in majority of plants. C4 plants are having another adaptation to overcome photorespiration. Now let us discuss the pathway. So this is the problem. RUBP combines with oxygen in the presence of Rubisco's oxygenase activity forming 2-phosphoglycolate and 3-phosphoglycerate. To regenerate this 2-phosphoglycolate back to Calvin cycle, it should pass through peroxisome and mitochondrion, three organelles releasing carbon dioxide also. This can be remembered easily by CPM. The organelles involved in photorespiration are CPM, chloroplast, peroxisome and mitochondrion. Let's have a look into the detailed pathway. So this is actually happening. RUPP combines with oxygen in the presence of Rubisco forming 2-phosphoglycolate. Therefore, the cycle is also called as C2 cycle. Along with phosphoglyceric acid, this enters Calvin cycle. Then it is converted to glycolic acid. Then glycolic acid is transported to peroxisome where it becomes glyoxylic acid combines with hydrogen peroxide forming glycine. Then glycine is transported to mitochondrion. Two molecules of glycine combines to form serine with the release of carbon dioxide and ammonia. Ammonia is also toxic to plant therefore it should be neutralized. Then serine is transported back to peroxisome where it forms hydroxypyruvic acid. Then it is converted to glyceric acid. Finally, glyceric acid enters chloroplast. With the use of ATP, it becomes phosphoglyceric acid. Thus enters Calvin cycle. So during this pathway, as you can see, ATP is utilized, NADH is utilized, then ammonia is released, carbon dioxide is released. This 
The release of carbon dioxide reduces carbon dioxide fixation, thereby altogether reduces the photosynthetic efficiency of plants. That is why C4 plants which is living in 40 plus degree conditions avoid photorespiration by C4 pathway. For C3 plants as they are living in water sufficient condition with moderate temperature even though there is photorespiration then that doesn't affect the C3 plants that much. Ammonia, carbon dioxide, NADH2, ATP everything is utilized during the process without producing sugar so it is causing wastage of energy. And finally what are the advantages of photorespiration? Even though we consider this photorespiration as a wasteful process as we know there is nothing happening inside a cell inside a cell as a wasteful process. Now we are having many evidences indicating the importance of photorespiration in plants. It's a mechanism to protect cells against damage associated with high O2 concentration and high light and acts as a mechanism of energy dissipation preventing light induced damage. Photorespiration protects C3 plants from photo inhibition or high light intensity that causes damage of photosynthetic apparatus. Then second photorespiration is also involved in nitrogen assimilation. Then it is having a role in plants pathogen defense system. Then recent reports suggest that it is having a role in mitigating oxidative stress under drought condition, water stress or salinity condition. When the plant is under stress, photorespiration is having a role to overcome that oxidative stress. And finally, it has a role in balancing the ratio of NADPH and ATP within the cell. And that's it. Thank you so much for your support. You are with biologyexamsforyou.com. Please subscribe, share and like this video.